ages to sing of his love for me. Oh, marvelous, oh, wonderful, and marvelous, and ever be marvelous, oh, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Thank you very praise much for keeping the mic and give God praise some praise. Lord. If you know that his love for us is so marvelous, Hallelujah. then we have much to give him God thanks for tonight. Thank you, Sister Thank Gooden, you, for that wonderful Thank song. We know that his praise love for us is from everlasting to Lord. everlasting. We can outlove him praise because Lord. he is a loving God. God bless Hallelujah. you all. Thank Bless you, you all. I'm going to ask our visiting pastor tonight who's with us, Pastor Glendon Wallace, to just ask God blessing tonight and this, our Bible study in Jesus' name. Pastor Wallace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Indeed, he's marvelous. We bow our heads even now as we look to God. Father in heaven, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, because you're God, and there is none like you. There was none before you, and there'll be none after you. You're God forever and ever. We are appreciative of your goodness, oh God. We praise you for your blessing. We glorify you for your protection. You are our God, and we all just want to magnify you. Lord, we welcome you tonight, mm -hmm. even as we join the brethren in Canada, United States, and here in Jamaica and elsewhere on this Zoom Bible study. We thank you, God, for technology, and we thank you, God, for the privilege we have even to, oh, yeah. to, to dive in your word and to be edified by them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for providing the means by which we, oh, in spite of COVID, we are yeah, able to, to study your word and to be edified. Oh, praise yeah. the name of the Lord. We pray, God, for, for this appetite, this spirit, yeah. this, this desire to know more about you. Oh, we yeah. present yes. tonight, oh God, your manservant, Pastor Corey. We pray that you continue to bless him, bless his family, bless his ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we present, oh God, our presenter, Pastor Green, in your care tonight oh, yeah. oh god you have used him time and time but tonight is a different occasion and you look to you even now for direction we pray for a life call to be taken off the altar oh god oh, and yeah. anoint yeah. your man servant oh we god so that, hallelujah hallelujah yeah. that which you have him to say will be said and directed yeah. by your holy spirit we thank you for all the members who are here we pray oh god that you'll inspire them let your will be done on this platform and for all those who will be joining us later oh god we present let let our mind be centered on you he now and on your word take charge as we surrender everything and everyone to your loving caring hands until you thanks by faith in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise Thank God. You. Thank you very much, Pastor Wallace. God bless you, sir. Praise God. And I know that he answered prayer. So we give God thanks. Tonight again, brethren, I, for those who came on late, just let me say welcome again, one and all. I can see that we all ready to feast on the word of God. Amen. The Bible declare it that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And we are living in a world now where we have so many different religion and so many different preachers and, and everything is out there. And so we want the truth. And that is why we are here tonight. We want the truth and the word of God is true. And so tonight we are here to feast on the word of God. So feel free to ask any question. Feel free to make your comment. Even if your views are different, we are open tonight to hear your views because I'm quite sure that Pastor Howard Green is capable and welcome the views. And I know he will give his honest contribution based on the word of God. So feel free 
at this time. We know we have some burning questions from last week. Pastor Green will facilitate them as he present um, the, the, the tonight presentation as we look at the gifts and how it is misused, and if it is misused, how? Within the church. And so we will look at that from the word of God. So tonight, congregation, brethren, on this platform, I present to you my bishop, my overseer, Pastor Howard Green out of Toronto, Canada. Receive him in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Corey. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I've been on vacation, you know, so you notice I'm not shaved. I've been on vacation for a week and change, and I'm just enjoying not doing anything at all <laughs> and just being lazy. Um, I, I, I couldn't tell when last I've had the privilege of sleeping in till noon. I find myself doing a lot of crazy things these days. So, But I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to live in a country where you can have vacation and still get paid and still lazy around. I want to thank God for Pastor Quarry. And I want to thank God for his lovely wife, Lisa, and their blessing, their child, which God has blessed them with. Um, that's such a great testimony. If you haven't heard about that testimony, um, I'm sure one day um, Sister Lisa or Pastor Corey will share that testimony with you. When I first heard it, I was quite enhammered um, by the power of God and how God honors his people. Uh, for those who are in Jamaica right now and maybe South uh, Florida, or, or, or um, you know, parts of the Caribbean. Um, we just like, uh, in, here in Canada, in Toronto, we actually dislike you right now because it's freezing cold here. <laughs> um, you know, the other day I had to go out and shovel the snow and it wasn't pretty at all. I'm, I'm getting up there in age. And so I'm not as agile and as strong as I used to be. So um, it's back breaking work. Um, you know, we long for the Caribbean. Um, just like the children of Israel, when they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So um, a bit of humor there. I would like to thank everybody for joining today. I mean, I really do appreciate you. And um, I'm, I recognize as well that, you know, there are people from different parts of um, the world and that people may have different views on the subject that we're dealing with. This subject, of course, um, is a very important one and has been uh, broadcasted um, out of Ottawa, um, the capital city, um, from the Church of God Sabbath Keeping. Um, its current pastor right now is Pastor Louis George, who's a senior pastor, and Pastor Lloyd Quarry, which is the associate pastor. And I would consider this a great moment to take the opportunity to announce to you that on January 16th, 2021, Pastor Lloyd Quarry and his wife Lisa will be the senior pastor and family of that congregation in Ottawa. And I wanna congratulate Pastor Quarry on this appointment. This service will be broadcasted um, live, streamed through YouTube at um, COG Sabbath live stream. I will get that information to him and he can post it on the screen next week perhaps. And you can all uh, join in um, to hear. Um, it's just gonna be about two hours. Um, and it's going to be from 2.30 to, I think, 4.30. Um, so congratulations to Pastor Quarry on this, uh, this amazing appointment. We are in great um, anticipation of the work that Pastor Quarry uh, will be doing uh, in that congregation. Um, and we are very excited, actually. We are very excited for, for, uh, uh, for Pastor Quarry and Lisa. You know, Pastor Green, you're mute. Can you hear me now? Sure. Perfect. Um, so we've been studying the appropriate operation of the Holy Spirit in the church. And we have spent the last two weeks going through that. And, um, you know, you've heard, for those who were part of it, um, you've heard our position on the subject matter purely on the, based on the word of God. And, um, of course, we do acknowledge and recognize that, you know, 
it is not easy always to hear something different from what you're acclimatized to or accustomed to. And so we, we are, we're aware that there are individuals who come online who may not share the same views. And so what I thought we would do, we're gonna be talking about the misuse of the holy, of this, of spiritual gifts in the church. That is this week's subject. For those who actually missed the first two weeks, if I'm not mistaken, Pastor Quarry was recorded and you could speak to Pastor Quarry and he'll be able to give you um, access to that recording, which will allow you to listen. And, um, but it, it, it'll be kind of difficult to go back through two weeks and almost five hours of information. Um, we just have to move forward, but hopefully if you are interested, um, he can provide that to you as well. And so we were dealing with the appropriate operation of the Holy Spirit in the church, and we've gone through that. But like Pastor Corey mentioned, we are absolutely certain that there are some individuals that may have a different take on this. I'm sorry, I was just receiving a call. Um, may have a different take on the way we have positioned um, the operation of the Holy Spirit in the church and may see it differently. And so what I thought would be important before we move into a subtopic of the misuse of the spiritual gifts in the church, I think it will be quite important to give those individuals who may have a different take on it, an opportunity to express themselves and share their position. Pastor Corey mentioned this earlier. We're not afraid of that, brethren. We, we actually um, welcome because the word of God should defend itself. And so if you are an individual who are joining the study tonight and you were with us for the past couple of weeks and you have a different interpretation of the texts that we have studied, uh, pri primarily uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corin um, Acts 2, and 1 Corinthians 14, we certainly would like you to uh, take the opportunity to either raise your hand or just uh, interrupt me and uh, let me know that you'd like to share your opinion that's different from, from ours. And then what we will do is to get into the misuse of the spiritual gifts in the church. So I'm gonna stop here for a minute. I'm gonna provide an opportunity for anyone. Please do not feel, you know, because you, most of the people may have a similar view and yours is different. Please do not feel that you have to um, somehow be afraid to share your opinion and your view of the scripture. So let me stop here and ask you to share your thoughts if you have a difference of opinion. Uh, David here. Yes. Um, I share your, your opinion. I just um, heard you said two things that I probably just need some clarity on or further, just a little further explanation. Certainly. You spoke, uh, um, I think it was the first week about um, the gifts and, you know, they're listed there in scriptures. But I, I heard you saying that a believer, uh, it, it is quite possible that a believer will not be the recipients of any of these gifts. So you can be in church for many years and not receiving any of these gifts that the Spirit gives. How, how, how do you rationalize that? Oh, thank you. Um, I don't remember saying that, but <laughs> but it's possible. It's possible because my I'm really old, um, and I don't my brain doesn't work as as good. Um, I don't recall saying that. What I what I recall saying was about um, the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So, um, and tell me if I'm on the uh, 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 Pastor Davis. Please let me know if I'm on the wrong uh, note. Um, what I remember saying is that the individuals, there are individuals who hold to the view that the sign of that you, one has received the Holy Spirit or the gift of the Holy Spirit um, is speaking in tongues. And that is, um, that is their view on it, that you, if you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you must first speak in tongues. 
And I said, I don't, dis I don't agree with that thought. And I, I was using um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as an example to say that Paul said, do all prophesy, do all speak in tongues, are all apostles, and so on and so forth. And, um, and he said, no, we aren't. Therefore, I, and, and he used specifically, do all speak in tongues? And he said, no. So I do not, what I do see in scripture, which I do not think is a precedent, is the fact that on the two occasions where we see that the individuals, both in Acts chapter two and in Acts chapter nine, I think, I will quote it, um, where the brethren received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they prophesied and they, and, and they spoke in tongues in both. But in Acts chapter nine, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So that, um, that, that was two um, different manifestations. So please remind me if, if I, my memory is not serving me well around that piece, or if you were talking uh, about something different today. Are you saying that as a believer, mm -hmm. you will receive one of the gifts? Just a yes or no. Do you say as a believer in Christ Jesus, a baptized, born again Christian, serving Christ, you will receive one of the gifts that the Spirit gave? I cannot, I cannot say that for a fact. Um, I cannot say that for a fact because... Um, if, if we're talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost, that every believer has to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, right? Now you have the gift of the Holy Ghost and you have the gifts of the Spirit, right? So the gift of the Holy Ghost is what brings a person in the body of Christ, right? However, people manifest different gifts, which the, the nine are um, I mentioned in chapter 14. So I cannot say emphatically that all people, all persons who receive the gift of the Holy Ghost will demonstrate spiritual talents or spiritual gifts. I, I could not say that emphatically. All right, thank but you. That, yeah. My ahead, last please. one, I, 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 yeah. I know there's others. That's my last one. Um, you spoke about the possibility, legitimate possibility of irrational behavior when the spirit comes upon someone. You remember saying that? Yes, how I do. How do you explain that? So, how do you justify um, just for, irrational behavior? Right. So, so, it, so it is important. So for instance, when we receive the spirit of God, we understand that we are also humans, biological beings, right? And as such, when the spirit of God comes upon us, especially at the infancy of receiving the power of God, human beings, especially if this is new to you, um, biologically can operate in a way that is unbecoming. So for instance, you might see people, and it happened to me, you might see people running up and down, like just running, right? It's, 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 um, or you might see people falling on the floor, and they might, um, you might even hear people chattering as opposed to speaking in a more audible, um, that's not the best word. You may hear people chattering like they're stammering as opposed to saying something that sounds like a tongue. You will hear them actually like it's just almost like nonsense to be honest with you. And, and forgive me, I'm not, I don't mean to insult anyone, but that actually happens a great deal during the infancy of a person receiving the Holy Spirit, because biologically, physically, they have not, it's new to them. It's new. It's a power that comes over an individual. And that power is so great and so strong that the person, either the first time or, or you know, it newly uh, received the Holy Spirit, sometimes allow their physical self to operate, to behave, to conduct ourselves in a way that is not, would not necessarily be the same way that a mature Christian person who has received the spirit will learn to channel and operate uh, in the Holy Spirit. So it, it is possible. 
and, okay, I, and I was uh, driving home the point too as well, if I may, that it doesn't mean that that person doesn't legitimately have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that because a lot of people, you know, I've heard people say, this person does not build a spirit because they fell on the ground or, you know, they knocked over something, a chair. And somebody may say that that's not the Holy Spirit. That not, that's not necessarily true. That person may have yet, because that's what we were, we are actually doing is saying that Paul had to write to the brethren at Corinth to say, there is an order and there is a way to do something. And because of that, that, that satisfies the question of whether or not a person can have the legitimate spirit and do something inappropriate. All right, thank you. I thought those, I thought those were two brilliant questions, by the way. And thank oh, you for your great memory or, or your short pen. Yes, go ahead, please. I have a question, just Most so sure. I, and maybe, maybe it will come out in the gifts of the spirit or, or such, but is there a difference? Do I, can I safely say that I have, does the Holy Spirit then, I want to organize my, my, my question properly, gives Sorry. different, are there different category of gifts? So like Brother Davis was just speaking and asking you if, everybody is endowed with a gift and you're you are saying no you cannot safely say that but are there different categories of gift are there gifts that come naturally based on my natural innate ability and then other gifts that come as a result of that which is given by the holy spirit great question um so if if we could use the word gift when we are referring to people's natural abilities we can use that 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 is not the holy that's not the gift of the holy spirit right and we we need to distinguish that now the word gift can be used in that context right so somebody said this person is gifted to play basketball right this person is gifted to like usain bolt to run this person is gifted to you know play the violin the, those are natural human abilities which you learn and you operate um based on you know, either exposure, um, the, you know, a uh, nurture, something in your brain, you know, because everybody, I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, the whole study, uh, Freudian study about nurture versus nature. Um, some people are, their brains are, are, dis, are, are wired in a certain way and certain things they're just really talented at. That has nothing to do with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's human capability. The gift of the Spirit is um, is these are gifts that a person receives from God. It comes as a result of the Spirit of God coming down on a person. You, you could not perform this gift without the Spirit of God coming down on you. And so the, in chapter 14, that we discussed last week, there are nine of them that are mentioned. And so these gifts, they are given by the spirit of God, and they are not a naturally endowed um, process. It doesn't come through a naturally endowed process. So they're, they're two distinct things. Just to follow on, so you're saying that I may very well be a part of the church, but I have not gotten one of those gifts that comes as a result of the spirit? I am saying it's quite possible. But I, as I said to... Um, as I said to uh, Brother Deacon Davis, Deacon. I think, Deke Davis, uh, as I said, I, I'm not emphatic on that. That I'm not emphatic on because I, I, I cannot go to any scripture and I'm never emphatic on anything. I cannot use scripture to, to validate. Okay, Pastor Green, there's a hand, um, Deacon Meeks out of Jamaica. And I want you to know, sir, that I'll be looking out for the hands and let you know Sister Jackie Perfect. will be looking out for the question in the chat and she will read them for you when time available. Thank you very much. Deacon Meeks, you can go ahead. Perfect. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Pastor Quarry. Um, good night, Pastor Green. And, and good night, Pastor. Um, As I listen to you know, the discussions that came to the fore. I remember when I sat on the FIC board here in Jamaica, mm -hmm. I had done a presentation on harnessing the spiritual gifts within, within you. And you would see um, some of those spiritual gifts 
you know, Paul, Paul would Paul Paul would address them, for instance, for instance, in in um, you know, Corinthians, and I'm seeing where he addressed them in uh, Colossians as well, and I'm seeing, I believe, where Peter would have mentioned that you should use those spirits, those those gifts to enhance the the body, the body of um, Christ. Um, right. When I look at those particular gifts. Um, somehow I'm thinking that, um, you know, your gifts should really be used to one, enhance and edify the body of Christ. Right. But I'm also thinking that while some of those gifts might not, um, you know, we might not see them listed, um, as is currently, and I'm saying that on the basis that, for instance, there are persons who are very good at you know social media and all of those things and you know connecting you know the church to various technological platform right. and i believe that those things um you know can enhance the body of christ in some shape or form right if i look at those gifts right that were listed by paul in corinthians and colossians I'm really not seeing a technology gifting, but I know that there are persons who really have that kind of gifting and it does enhance the body of Christ. How do you see that, even though it's not listed as some of those um, um, gifts that Paul would have mentioned in Corinthians and, and in Colossians? Beautiful question. First rate question. Um, so you are correct. Paul, when he wrote, he wrote concerning the gifts that he has seen. And I don't think necessarily that the, what Paul wrote was the exhaustive list as well. There might He wrote according to some of the gifts that he has seen manifested. And it's just like how we speak as humans, we write the same way. Just like how the scripture says, if everything that was supposed to be written concerning Christ were to be written in a book, the whole world could not hold it. So we know that from, from a position of writing, when the apostle writes, he's writing and he's writing in almost in summary, right? He's writing almost in summary. Now, consider this. When we, um, when we look at Ephesians, he said, when he ascended in high, he led captivity captive. And I can pull that up. Let me, let me actually just, because I want to read the text itself. So, um, Uh, Ephesians chapter six, I think it was, it is, I'm sorry, four. So it's, I want, want us to read it. So I'm going to read from verse eight. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he that, he that descended in this is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might be filled with all things. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Now, if we look at Acts chapter four, what do we see? Because Acts chapter four came before Ephesians chapter four. Well, what, I mean, Acts chapter seven. When we look in Acts chapter seven, we see the role of the deacon. The role of the deacon um, is mentioned, but you notice that here, there's no such thing as he gave some deacons. But throughout the Bible, you will hear Paul write, if a man, you know, um, uh, desire the office of a deacon, um, X, Y, and Z. So if you go back to, um, sorry, um, Acts chapter 7, you will notice that the gifts, the, 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 the role, sorry, of the deacon is a powerful role in the church and gifts and, and, and there were requirements for the deacons to hold that office. But here you don't see Paul writing about deacons, right? You don't see that at all. So what, which is to suggest to me that it is not an exhaustive list, meaning not every single gift that existed in the time of the apostle was a gift that Paul wrote about. There could have been other gifts 
that Paul did not mention in his letters uh, to Timothy or to the brethren at Corinth. Having said that, to the point of whether or not um, God is in every age, God can is going to work by his spirit and will allow people to do great uh, signs and giftings. So, for example, and I, I don't know the exact text and I wasn't prepared for this question, but great question, by the way. We see that when Moses was was uh, went up to the mountain, Moses was with the Lord in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And God told Moses to um, God hewed out two tables of stone the first time and gave it to Moses and wrote the Ten Commandments on it. And God gave Moses instructions about how the uh, the tabernacle should be built and how the the furnishings of the tabernacle should be built, including the Ark of the Covenant. We notice that in the book of Deuteronomy, and I don't know the exact text off the top of my head, maybe somebody can find it and share it with me, that God said to Moses, listen, there is a young man by the name of Beelzeel, I think his name is, and I may have pronounced that incorrectly, that I have put my spirit in him and he is going to build the Ark of the Covenant. So here we see that the spirit of God was in an individual to make the Ark of the Covenant. We would say that that person is a carpenter, right? Let's say he's a carpenter or a decorator or interior decorator, whatever we would call it today. But we see that the spirit of God, even before in the Old Testament, that the spirit of God was upon him and that gift that God had given him, I have put my spirit in him to be able to use this gift that I've given him to build the furnishings of the church. Now we come back to the to, to your point, which is the current state, right? Like, um, um, what do you call it? Internet, right? So for you in, instance, you know, use of the internet, can God put his spirit in a person to you as a gifting to use the internet, to use um, 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 social media? Absolutely, 100%, because it's all about what God wants done and done a certain way, right? That doesn't mean that that person could not have, a person could not have that talent, because people who are outside of God are really good at you know, using these platforms. So a person can have that gift without it coming from God. But usually when we see a gift from God, and I probably should just add this, usually when we see a gift or a talent come from God, it is usually something that is supernatural. In other words, and I'm not saying it always is. Thank you very much, Exodus 36. So uh, for reference, Exodus 36 is where that I was quoting that text um, earlier, not Deuteronomy. And so, I'm not saying that a person cannot have that gift because they went to school for it or they have a bent for it. That could be the case. But we, we, we cannot deny as well that an individual could have the gift to use um, technology to advance the kingdom of God. That is, that is very clear that that is possible, Deacon makes. Very long response, but I, maybe you can let me know if I answered your question. If you have a follow up. Yes, certainly, certainly um, you did. I just wanted to just um, recap a little bit. I know I did mention Colossians, but um, that, that wasn't correct. So in terms of the spiritual gifts, you, you'd see that coming out, for instance, in Romans 12. You will also see it coming out in 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and, 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 and 1 Peter 4, you, you'd see all of those things coming out right. in, in, in those um, you know, chapters in terms of the listing of the spiritual gifts. Um, you, are, you are actually, well, I, I, I share the same view that, 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 that you share, but I'm also thinking that there are certain basic elements and certain basic um, how should I put it? There are certain basic gift giftings that you know, I believe should exist in 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 a church, and uh, and certainly the gifts the, the, the giftings are not, um, egg, I mean exhaustive, but certainly uh, the one question that Lisa Lisa asked is, you know, how do you categorize 
some of those giftings. And, and, and for instance, the, the technology gifting for me would fall under what I call service. So you're really serving in the ministry. And in terms of a category, I would really place that, um, you know, under service according to Romans um, 12 and Peter as, you know, using those gifts to serve and enhance, enhance the ministry. So, so I really share that view as well, Pastor Green. Right. Well, I mean, in addition to that, before we take another question or another input, um, you know, the Bible, remember last week when we did uh, 1 Corinthians 14, the Bible speak about helps. It speaks about governments. Uh, helps could be very broad, right? Um, helps could be very, verse 28, helps could be very broad. So helps could mean a variety of different things. Um, and so, you know, that, that, who knows, right? I mean, I don't know what exactly when Paul said helps, what exactly was he speaking of in that spe spe specific context? Um, you know, for instance, when you read in the book of Matthew, I think the Bible said that there were certain women that followed Jesus, Joanna, um, Mary Magdalene, um, and others, um, and they ministered unto him, um, meaning Christ. So would that be gifts of helps? I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, that, that where I, I try to, to, to look at the scriptures objectively and to say, well, I cannot say what the scriptures don't say, but I can have an opinion on the issue to say that it's a possibility that when we speak about helps, um, several types of gifts could fall within that context of, of helps. Deacon Mix. Okay, Pastor, and there's one more hand from Pastor Glendon Wallace. And let sure me know, sir, when you will end this segment and to go into the other segment. Thank you. Most, more, more, more certainly. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Pastor Corey. Thank you, Pastor Green. I'm, in regards to the question Deacon Meeks asked, I was thinking if that particular, well, the reference he made to the internet, somebody who is maybe good at that, programming and all of that. Would, would you say this could also fall under the gift of administration? Because I'm looking at it and he said, the person with this gift of administration has the ability to perceive needs, organize and administer program. So I'm just asking if you, if you based on the question he asked, if this could also mm -hmm. fall under the ambit of um, administration, the gift of administration. Yeah, of course. Um... You know the function itself. Um, the function itself, it's 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 highly uh, possible that that could be classified as an administrative gift. Yes. Um, I, I I see no reason why it could not be seen in that way. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, what we are actually looking for. So so let's go back to some of the gifts that we talked about, especially the top nine that were mentioned by Apostle Paul. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues. What these, the, the, what we know is that when the Spirit of God is on an individual and they manifest in these areas, these are not natural. These are supernatural things. In other words, if you think about the word of wisdom, what would be classified as the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom would be classified as in a situation, and I have witnessed this firsthand, maybe you've done the same, Pastor Wallace, where I'm in a meeting and we're having a meeting and there just seems to be a lack of clarity in that meeting. And I've seen an individual get up to stand and speak. And brother and sisters, believe you me, it settled the entire matter. Yes, that's true. And I've seen that individual do it multiple times. So I immediately, for me as a pastor, I identify that this person has the word of wisdom. I, you know, because it's done multiple times and the outcome of that gifting is it, 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 it satisfies the circumstance that we were under. And, and furthermore, an individual such as myself, as I'm there and we are reasoning things through, 
I realized that nobody has the answer. It's not a, it's not a rational human response that you can say, well, all right, this is the best way to do this, or this is the best way to do this. You know, we, we all give our thoughts, but we almost kind of feel like we're still at ground zero. When this individual stands up and speaks, the matter is settled. Very similar to what brother, what happened with James um, can, when Peter um, was called into contention with regard and by the elders and the apostles at Jerusalem concerning the baptism of Cornelius the Gentile. We see that when Peter um, explained to the brethren what happened, that you know, and gave his surmisation, um, because the the apostles and elders were very concerned about him going into Gentiles, and, and we all know the text. But you notice when James stood up and spoke, um, you notice that how the spirit of uh, wisdom prevailed in James. This was not this was not a man, just a smart man. This was not just a person who's smart or who's wise as a human being, because there are people who are wise as human beings, right? But this is an operation by God infusing that individual with, with, with wisdom in the moment as he would from time to time. And the Bible says, and the saying pleased the multitude. So we know that that was the word of wisdom that came through James. Seeing that God has called the Gentiles to him, um, and I think in another instance with, with um, the apostle Paul as well, um, concerning the Gentiles and how, they're, um, how they were, um, the, some of the Jewish people wanted them to, their behaviors to be consistent as the Jews in terms of following the Jewish tradition. We see that, um, again, um, the apostles speaking up and saying, listen, we, we are not going to bound the Gentiles to this thing. That was from the Lord. But we, we will write unto Paul and Barnabas and give you these letters and send you with certain men from us that we trouble not the Gentiles, but we write these four things unto them. And, you know, you all know the story without me embellishing. And, and again, we see that the apostles, Paul and Barnabas, went through the churches with the other ministers who went with them, confirming the things that the apostles spoke. So I believe that, yes, it could be, um, you know, classified as that. But my point is that the word, whatever the gifting is, is not a natural ability. It is something that's supernatural. The person is behaving and doing something that is not ordinary. It's the gift of God that has to give that to them. Thank you. Sorry, Pastor Wallace, I don't know if you have a... Yes, Pastor Green, thank you, Mark. Okay. I'm Pastor Green. Yes, go ahead, please. I think I have someone in the... Um in the group here that has a problem myself ha is having a problem raising my hand and he wants to make a comment of um, course please so go ahead um brother joseph thank you thank you sister lisa so the point i wanted to make is uh when we when we look at this uh, uh this topic of gifts i think we should look at it from the perspective of the human body right human body has many uh members the bible right. says so, right and each of the members, they contribute to the well-being of the body. Correct. So there's not a single part of the body that does not contribute some, something to the functioning of that body. So I take that analogy uh, to mean that every member in the body of Christ has a gift through the Holy Spirit. And they contribute to the benefit of the group at large. So the base of that, I'm looking at... Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 17, which says uh, simply to each, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, to yes. each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Are you speaking about 1 Corinthians 12, 17, you said? 12, verse 7, yeah. 12, verse 7, correct. Sorry, go ahead, please. So yeah, so there Paul says that to each, and I'm reading from the ESV, to each is given the manifestation manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Uh, for to one is given uh, through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, to another, the utterance of knowledge, etc., etc. So from that, I take that it's to every one of us, we've been given a gift 
through the indwelling of the spirit to benefit the body, the corporate body of Messiah as a whole, right? And of course, there's that list that uh, we all know, speaking in tongues, uh, prophecy, wisdom. But I think in, in Romans, uh, I think it's Romans 12, Paul talks about other types of, uh, of gifts. For example, I think it's in Romans 11, sorry, uh, 12, sorry, rather. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 verse uh, six through to eight. He talks about prophecy. He talks about ministry. He talks right. about teaching. He talks about exhortation. He talks about giving. Right. Right. He talks about ruling. He talks about showing mercy. And this is in the context of, uh, you know, the gifts that we've been given through the Holy Spirit. So I, I take it that we all have a gift. It might not be, you know, standing up there and preaching or teaching. It could be as simple as showing mercy. It could be as simple as uh, ruling, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So stay on. I, I like to explore the word of God. And, and remember that, you know, what we mentioned earlier, too, is, is we're not emphatic. You, you, may, you may be very right. Um, theologically, I always like when, you know, I, I remember my professor at, at the university always challenges us to ensure that, you know, when we read something, we're not putting our own spin on it. Because I said you might be completely right. Um, I'm not discounting that, but I just think it's important. But let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Right, and, and it would be better for us to probably um, go back to verse six with your permission, sir. Now, there are diverse operations or different operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. And the word but is important. So Paul is, he makes an argument and he's saying, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, of course, obviously, one could say that. One could say that when it says every man, and I know you read from a different version, when it says to every man to profit with all, one could read it to say, well, it says to every man, meaning everybody got it. But that's, is, that, is that what the text is saying? And I think if you go back to the text, that's actually not what the text is saying. And that, that again, is not to discount the idea that, the, that I'm saying that Everybody that I, I, I made a, a baseline to say that I don't know. I really don't know. But, and that's the truth, I don't know. But, 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 but the text itself, we have, to, we, have to be, we have to be precise. And what it's saying here, but the manifestation of the spirit. So he's saying that whenever the spirit manifests, right? If I could read it that, and tell me if, I'm, if you think I'm on the right path. Whenever the spirit manifests, it is given to every person who what? The person who is manifesting. Mm -hmm. the, the everyone True. there, the not every man there is not to every person in the body. It's speaking that the, the subject is speaking to the person who manifest. And what it is saying is that the, the, the manifestation of the spirit, when, it, when you see the spirit manifest, everyone that manifests in the spirit, it must be profitable to all. Right. So that, that's what the text is actually saying, literally. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not discounting um, the idea that it's not possible that whenever everyone that receives as the spirit of God in the body of Christ receives a gift with it. I wouldn't say that, that to me, the spirit of God is the gift itself. Mm -hmm. Right. And it gives strength and it guides and it teaches. But then it chooses, in my view, individuals to give a certain ability so that that person can help the church to uh, function as a as a body. So um, you know, I, I certainly enjoy your perspective, mm -hmm. but again, um, I, I'm just sticking with the text itself and saying that really, at the, at, if you read the text, it is not saying that everybody has it. Just this text is saying that. Whenever a person receives it and manifests, anyone who receives it and manifests should make sure the manifestation profits the congregation. So I'll give you an opportunity. I don't know if you have a... 
a second thought on it. <laughs> but I'm just giving, you know what I mean? I still don't true, say true, that, true. that that's not, you know what I mean? Just to be, and, and, and I'm saying this. Oh, sorry, what was your name again? Joseph. Brother Joseph, whereabouts are you? I'm in Ottawa. Ottawa, okay. Um, Brother Joseph, the, 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 and I love your, your keenness for the word of God. The reason why I'm stressing that is because it is so important in biblical interpretation. I think I spent maybe a, probably two years studying biblical interpretation at the college. It is so important because doctrines are formed against interpretation, right? And so it, it's important. It sounds to me like you're a budding uh, teacher or something of that kind, right? I may be wrong. I, I don't have the gift of prophecy. <laughs> but, or, <laughs> but I can tell you why it's important to ensure that when we, when we interpret the text, that the text is interpreted correctly in the context of the discussion, because if not, then we, we may form a basis for a teaching that might not be scripturally correct, even though it may be true. And, and that's why I stress that. I, I don't know if you wanted me to go back to Romans, if uh, I, could, I could as well, or if you're satisfied yes. with my response. Well, I think uh, for now, let, let me uh, maybe open it up to others to put in their comments, okay. but I, right, I do appreciate your, your perspective. It's just that it occurred to me that uh, if the analogy of the, the body is used to represent uh, the church, and we know that every single member of the body is contributing something to, to the body that in the same way, uh, we've all been given some gifts, right? A uh, spiritual gift. Uh, that we are to exercise for the common good. I could be wrong. I do. I do understand where you're coming from. So, but I just wanted yeah. to share my my few cents. And, and you could. And, and I'm telling you, you could be right also. You could be right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't 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 dismiss it because I, I made it clear that uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say that that's that's the wrong uh, analogy. Um, you know, when you go to Ephesians, um, um, Paul was drawing the example of a mm -hmm. Roman soldier, and he says. You know, he sees a Roman, so he said, put on the helmet of salvation, put on the breastplate of righteousness, and your, 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 your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And he's describing a Roman soldier, and he, and he uses the Roman soldier to illustrate the various components of faith um, um, that, that we have in, in, in Christ. Our, 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 um, but it, that doesn't mean that necessarily those were all, you know, the helmet of salvation you know, the breastplate of righteousness. It doesn't mean that that comprehensive, but he uses that as an example to show some of the elements, right? So I think all the time as a young budding teacher, all the time, as when you're, when you're delivering the word to your pupil, it is very important that, you know, um, that we, we are consistent with what? It doesn't, and always be clear to say, hey, this might be true, that might be true, but let's look at the actual text and then let's examine the text for what it actually says for itself, right? But I love your spirit. Thank you for your question and thank you for your insight. Thank you. Pastor Quarry, I don't know if anybody else has a question or insight. Uh -huh. Pastor, Pastor Green. Yes, go ahead. Pastor Quarry, I'm sorry, may I ask one more question? Oh, of course. This is, we want to get no, all I'm having a serious problem because if <laughs> based on what my takeaway would be tonight, um, and sorry if I sound confused, but based on what my takeaway would have been tonight, um, I understand that you're saying I may very well be a part of the church, but don't have a gift. That means I'm useless. I don't serve a purpose in the church. My being a part of the church doesn't really matter. Is that the question? Can I do I am I allowed to interpret what you said in that way? If I don't yeah. have a gift, if I don't have a use, a purpose. Good. I, I, I like mm -hmm. your honesty. Always appreciate your honesty. Um, so I think it's it's important to understand that if one is not gifted, does not mean that that person cannot function. Oh. Right? A gift doesn't mean that that person cannot function. It's like, it's like, um, you know, having, let's say, 
the gift of preaching. Some people have the gift of, to preach. There's no doubt about that, right? I think we have seen that, right? Um, it doesn't mean that another person cannot preach. That person may not have the gift of preaching. And it's clear. We see it all the time. We see people preaching and we, we enjoy the preaching because they are talking about the word of God, right? And it's not like we walk away going, well, you know, that was dumb. No, it's the word of God. They preach it. We get it. And we go home rejoicing. But when a person who has the gift of preaching goes up to preach, it's a whole different story because that person just has the gifting. And you, it, it's actually clearly seen. It's clearly identified when a person has the gift, right? So take, for instance, um, there are individuals that I know that have the gifting of teaching, right? And I know of a bishop who has the gifting of teaching, um, brilliant teacher, brilliant, first class. And when he preaches, he preaches the same thing that he teaches, but you can tell he doesn't have the gift of preaching. Well, you, you, you put him in front of a class like this, right, right now, your head will be blown with information that he would be going through. It's incredible to listen to him, right? So what I, we are not saying and again, the caveat is that we're not saying that what I'm saying is true. So I could be very wrong. I'm saying that I have not read a scripture in the Bible. I could not find a scripture in the Bible to suggest that every single person who receives the spirit of the Lord into the body of Christ has a specific gift. That's all I'm saying. But That's I'm the... saying on top of that, if the person um is in the body of christ and let's with the assumption that i am uh speaking factually that doesn't mean because you're part of the body of christ that you don't and i think um no let me not go there because that might i'm going to go against my own assumption but that doesn't mean in my view that that person doesn't contribute to the welfare of the church and the well-being of the church in one form or the other we're talking about gifting we're talking about spiritual gifting Right. I could do things in the church and it has nothing to do with my gift. It's not a gift. I just I just do it. And my addition to that, so if I may. Certainly. Uh, do you mind, Quarry. Pastor Quarry? I just want to make sure, Sister Quarry, if it I do because she said she was confused and and that is important. With your permission, Pastor Quarry. Really? Sure, sir. So Sister Quarry, oh, you're back asking me? You. Yeah, I'm coming back because I just want to make sure that at least you're clearing I your mind. I think it's something that we should um, probably go and do some more detailed research because I I was always of a different opinion to tell you the truth and being truthful. I was always of a different opinion and I still hold that opinion that everybody who's in the church has some gift, um, some passion, something that drives them that um, they want to wake up and do even without a congregation, that when they come in the, in, um, in the midst of a congregation, that that um, passion that drives them is when it's used, it's used for the betterment of the congregation in general and for the world at large, because if you go out and do it as well, the world. And as Deacon Meeks rightly said, there are some gifts that are never um, stated in the Bible per se, but it's your passion. And I think everybody should have a passion. Everybody does have a passion. That's just me personally yeah. thinking that, <laughs> but I wrote it in my book that I need to go do some research. So yeah. I'm going to be off on Friday. So I'm pretty much going to be researching. Yeah, that would be, but... that's healthy. That's healthy. And before we go, and thank you for your honesty. And before we go back to Pastor Corey, as he's given me permission to just continue this piece a little bit, you know, one, I think it's important as you do your studies to kind of ask yourself, where did I get that from? Because it's that would be important. If Once you set a premise, that premise has to be validated. You need something to say this. It can't be not you personally, Sister Corey. I'm just saying in general, Bible study, period. Never set a precedent. And that precedent is not based on something. Um, it, it could be it could be not direct, it could be indirect, but it always, whenever I say all men have the gift of the Holy Spirit and all 
pe persons who have the gift of the Holy Spirit have a gift from the Holy Spirit, I've set a precedent. Now I have to go back if somebody challenges me and say, okay, show me where, tell me how, right? Um, the other piece, um, it, you know, is, again, we have to create the distinction between a passion, a person's passion, and um, because, again, you see that in the world. People have passion in the world. People have passion to write, to read, to, to sing. Is that from the, no, that's not a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's different. Or else then what would be the distinction created between the person in the church and the person in the world? Right. This is a, a, a spiritual operation that operates in the time when the Holy Spirit moves. So Samson, as an example, and I'm belaboring the point, Samson, the Bible said um, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and he lifted up the gates of the city or he took, a, I mentioned, he took a, 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 a jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand men. If Samson, if the Spirit of God was not upon Samson, he could take that same jawbone of an ass and he could probably kill two men. But does that mean that it was the Spirit of God that was upon him to kill two men? Clearly, the activity of the Holy Ghost being upon him is an empowerment that allowed him to do something supernatural. This, th These gifts, and I'm, I'm stressing this, it's not human capability. These are supernatural behaviors that, and that's why Nicodemus said to Jesus Christ, you, you notice, Master, we know that you're a teacher come from God. No one can do the things you do except God is with him. It is impossible. Who can raise the dead unless God is with that person? How can you make a blind see if God is not with you? So these are supernatural gifts as opposed to just talents, human talents, and human capability. And it does not mean, in my estimation, finally, it does not mean that because a person um, does something outside. So, so let, let me give you an example. I show up at church. And if anybody knows me, Pastor Corey and I share this passion. We are workers, right? Maybe, maybe someone may say it's a gift. Okay. But I'm a person, I'll show up at church. And I see the floor um, that it needs mopping. Yeah. Yes. And I just, I'm just the kind of guy. I don't think it's necessarily a gift. Maybe it's a gift of helps. I'm not sure. But we share the same passion. I just take up the broom and I just, I just mop it. Just mop the floor. Yes. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a gift. I just mop the floor. But I know there's certain things I'm doing that the spirit of discernment is upon me, and I can discern something by the Holy Spirit and able to address a concern because, and that's not something I could have done by my human self. That is the, the marker of the Holy Spirit, gift of the Holy Spirit. It cannot be something that is natural. It's a super, if not manifest itself in a natural way, it is a supernatural behavior. Sorry, Pastor Quarry, I may have even taken away what you had to say. Lisa, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, sir. That's pretty fine. But um, I hold my point. I saw Evangelist Sam Sam Samuels and Brother Paul. They go in that harder. I, I just hold my point for now. Evangelist Samuel and then Brother Paul. Thank you, Pastor Green. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Quarry. I have not um, really be, um, last week was my first time um, joining. Yes, and yes. this week I take the liberty of doing so. So to join again because I believe it's a very interesting topic, yeah. and um, you know, and I want to uh, recognize um, Pastor Green as he did his presentation. Now, um, as I heard Sister Quarry there as she asked the question, put into the the spirit, uh, put into um, it, um, she feel useless in the sense of you know, in in that matter, and, and so you know, based on on my understanding of the scripture. You know, I believe that every man that come into the body of Christ do receive a gift because it, um, the bottom line, we come with a purpose. We come to enhance the body of Christ or to bring for edification in what we do. Right. And so as I, you know, I was looking back at first Corinthians chapter 12, yeah, you know, yeah. and I read from verse 17 in there, but the, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man 
to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these were kept that one of the self same spirit, dividing to every man, dividing to every man several as he will. Right? And so this speak value in the sense of that every man, and so we, as we call into the body of Christ, we are called to perform, right? And, and so you may not share the same gift that I do have, but it does not mean that we do not have a gift. I know it's so fascinating where Paul is concerned mm -hmm. that, that, you know, Paul in such a light like this, um, as I said today, the spirit of God still inspire, right? Because many things that Paul do address, we have not heard other writers write about it, right? So, so you know, today as we wobble with this, of the understanding of the different gifts and so forth, we must also seek to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. That, that as I heard Pastor Green say before, that if the um, that if if this if the Word of God should contain everything, right, then 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 the book the books will not be able to hold it. Right, and so we understand that God also inspired us today. That not because Paul has given us some things there that it does not go along um, accordingly and go, you know, to that extent. Right. So, so I believe that every man, as Paul said, it is given and it is prof and it, it is um, profitable and it's one that um that will bring for edification. Right. So you may not get the gift of healing. Are so forth, but what you do do get a gift, and I I believe that based on how Paul had related here, that every man that comes into the body of Christ, we come ready for work. You must have a tool, right? And so if we understand in that, you know, when we are workers, then you can't go to work without a tool, right? Mm -hmm. And so we come into the body of Christ. I believe all of us has gotten a tool for the work that we should perform. So when the, the Holy Spirit went to manifest, right? So if it calls for the shovel, let me speak metaphorically. And so if it calls for the shovel to do this particular work, then it, you, you, the man who have the hammer cannot work this work. It calls for the man who have the shovel. And so okay. in such light, this is what we become to understand because we are builders of the kingdom of God. And so I believe that every man, and I think that's, um, this is the thing that Sister Fury, I think, struggled to understand. And I, and I would look into this to understand that the scripture would declare to every man it's given. And some of us get three or four different gifts, right? Why some may get one, but every man do have a gift ready to perform for the work of God. And that is my intake on it. Yeah, thank you, Evangelist uh, Samuels. I do, I do um, appreciate your, your view. Um, I did say before, I, I'm not saying 100% because I, I don't know. And, and uh, to be honest with you again, uh, you know, reading my understanding of First Corinthians 12, 7 to 11, and I'm, I'm, I, I don't want you to change your position. I just want you to, I want you to maintain your position, but I, I want to let you know that my understanding of that text is different. So that even though it's speaking, it's, we're talking about the subject and the prefix. So we're talking about when, when the Bible says to every man, it's speaking about the persons who have received it, if that makes sense. So it's not saying every man as in every single person. At least I'm, I'm saying how I understand the scriptures. He's saying to everyone that has the gift, it has been given by the Holy Ghost as he wills to give it to, to, to human beings, right? So if you, again, if you read verse 7 downwards, I believe that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to is given to, and that is same expression where it says every man in verse seven yes. to profit with all. It's the same expression that um, is written in verse 11. Again, it's every man. And I think I kind of explained that before and I don't want to belabor the point nor, nor do I seek to um, change your position on the subject matter. 
I actually would prefer if that's the case. All I'm saying is that when I read that text, that's not what it says to me. That text says that everybody that receives it, everyone that receives it. So I said, um, um, how would I explain this? I want to I want to do justice so that you know at least you understand my position. Um, so if I let's say forty of us are in the church, let's say forty of us are in the church, and I and I said, everyone that's sitting on a blue chair stand up. Does it mean that everybody in that church is going to stand up if all the chairs are not blue? Um, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Pastor Green. Oh, okay, so you did understand me. Right. You just have a no, different I'm type of opinion. But I'm saying, right, but what, what, what I'm okay, saying gotcha, is gotcha, gotcha. Um, the, 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 um, what you're saying, everyone that is sitting on the blue chair, because that is the manifestation of the blue chair now, right? And that is what I'm saying. That is the manifestation of the blue chair. You have red chair there that, um, that is there in the church, as I follow your metaphor, Right. And so, and so, but it's not the work of the red chair. That does not mean that the red chair does not able to manifest, but the time has not come for the red chair manifestation. It is now the blue chair manifesting. And so in that aspect, the blue chair now, it's performing as though the Holy Spirit would have it to be now for such a purpose, right? For such a purpose. But it's going to be time now when the red chair will, when it will require for the red chair, to, to, to manifest and so now is that time that the Holy Spirit is going to allow because it's all about the, the sanction of the Holy Spirit at work here giving and giving the orders in which to benefit or to edify whatever needs mm -hmm. to be edified. I understand your position. I yes. understand. Um, yes. uh, again, all, all I was saying at the end of the day that everyone is referring to a specific person to have a specific yes. gift. That, 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 that is all I'm saying. So, but, but thank you for your input and your insight. Um, I love it, by the way. And, and you know, I, I'm a kind of person, I don't, uh, Pastor Quarry will tell you, um, when I reason the word of God, I am open to everyone's view and how they interpret the text. So, you know, feel, feel safe to uh, always share your views with me. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Pastor right. Queen. And so we're going to take um, one question from the chat, Sister Jackie, and then we're going to take Sister Kathleen, who raised her hand, and then Pastor Green, you will know where to go from there. So Sister Jackie, and then Sister Kathleen. Okay, just one note, though, Pastor Corey, before I read the question. Has Brother Paul asked his question? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think Brother Paul was... Uh, yes, sir. Back. Is it is it okay for me to ask my question? Um, yeah, well, I passed the quarry, the moderator. That's the quarry? Um, I, I think it was the question Sister Jackie have. Is it a different question you have, Sister Jackie? No, so it was Brother Paul first before the question from the chat. Oh, Brother Paul. Got you, got okay, you. Yes. So yes, Brother yes, Paul, yes. then the question from the chat, and then Sister Kathleen. Yes. Okay, go in that harder, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Tanda. Okay, yeah, thank you, Pastor Quarry. Yeah. Appreciate it, um, Pastor Green. Oh, nice to see you, Brother yeah. Paul. Yes, nice <laughs> seeing you, sir. And um thanks, sir. The way enable way got um allow you to explain um for the past um couple of weeks. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, my question is, sir, um when we um I said we when we first get baptized on the on the Faithful minister give the right hand of fellowship. What does that mean? The right hand of fellowship. Um, I'm assuming you mean like, um, so there, there's, there's a couple of things. The right hand of fellowship is, is an expression that you will find in the Bible once. The right hand of fellowship. And the reason the, the, that expression only came out of a discussion that Paul and, um, and Barnabas, um, as a matter of fact, let's find it, All right? Let's, let's pull that up. And I know it's not directly related, but I, I, I think that's a very good question as it relates to 
the difference between a believer and a member, right? That that that's how we use it today. But I want to, um, I want to use it in the context of how it was used in the time of Paul and Barnabas. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is um, I'm coming from. Uh, Acts chapter. Uh, sorry, my memory is failing me. So anyways, um, while I'm searching for this, um, this was really a, a, a act of the uh, Galatians 2. Thank you. Somebody's really good at this. My brain is, is fried. So Galatians 2, 9. Right. Now, um, let me read from verse 6. Galatians 2, 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat uh, uh, whatsoever they were, it make it no matter to me. This is Paul writing. God accepted no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. It's Paul was actually, this was kind of a, I mean, you're going to use the term loosely, was kind of an insult to those people. Paul was saying to them, look, look, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're saying. This is, I know what God has told me. And this is my own words, right? But contrary wise, when they saw, so otherwise, contrary wise mean otherwise. So otherwise, when they saw that the gospel of uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter. So all that meant, Brother Paul, is mm -hmm. that the gospel of the uncircum uh, uncircumcision means just to, um, that the Gentiles were not uh, required to circumcise like the Jews. So the So all Paul is saying is that the ministry that was given to him was to the uncircumcised or to the Gentiles. Um, Paul said that, that they, the brethren, they saw that this was the case. The same way God had called Peter to go to the, to the Jews, it is evident that God had called Paul to go to the Gentiles. Right? Uh, for he that wrought effectively in Peter, meaning the same God that worked in Peter, um, to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And I think that's self-explanatory. Now, verse nine. Now, when James and Peter and John, who seem to be pillars, what this means is that the, these were the higher ranking officers of the, of the, um, um, the, the 12. When they perceived or understood, when they recognized that the grace that was given unto me, in other words, that God had actually truly called him, according to verse eight, to be to to have the apostleship to the uncircumcised. When they realized that, they said they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, that they and they unto the circumcision. So the right hand of fellowship here is is an expression that is used, um, like I said, once in the Bible. And it actually just is just a, uh, I want to say, I want to say this. Um, it's almost like a acceptance. It's like a, almost a handshake, if you will, right? It's almost a handshake to say, we are in partnership with you. We will go to the Jews and you will go to the Gentiles. Right. So that, that's that's where that came from. As it relates to the church today, we use that to dif to differentiate people who are baptized versus people who are members of a local congregation. That's how it's used today. In other words, somebody can come to me and be baptized, but they may not want to be a part of that body. Right. I could be on a vacation somewhere and. I'm preaching or somebody hear me speaking and the person says they want to be baptized and I could go baptize them in the sea and never see them again. 
right? The Ethiopian eunuch is an example. Philip baptized him, never saw him again, right? So, but, but that, this expression, the right-handed fellowship is now used when we are accepting somebody in a local congregation to be a member of that church. That is not necessarily biblical. It is just a principle. Yes, sir. I, I, I get, um, I understand your, your, your comment, but um, what I understand from that is that um, this is how um, God allow his faithful minister to anoint. That's what I, 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 I got out of it from the, from the time I, I got baptized. So thanks for the clarity in that. Um, yeah. And there is a there's a distinction by the poll. Um, so there is the uh, I'm sorry to go off tangent a little bit, Pastor Corey. Um, there is the bap there's there is um, so there is baptism, first of all, and then there's the laying on of hands for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there is the right hand of fellowship. So those are kind of three distinct uh, functions that the church practices. The baptism obviously is biblical from an, an, a, and a practice that's biblically required. Laying on of hands is also biblical and a practice that the church um, uh, practices. We see that with Peter and Paul, and I'm um, sorry, Peter and Philip in Samaria. We see that with Paul and the 12 men who were baptized in the name of John. Um, and, and so so we can use that as a premise to say that those are biblical. And here we see the right hand of fellowship used only once in the Bible. And again, the circumstances under which it was used was not to really initiate somebody to a local church. It was to a shake of hand where Peter and John and, and, and Paul, sorry, Peter, John, and James were in agreement with Paul and Barnabas. You two go to the Gentiles we will stay with the with this with the uh, Jews. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's it's thanks for the clarity. It's my wrong way of saying it. It's, it's the laying of hand I should have mentioned. It's oh, not okay. the right hand. Got you. Appreciate gotcha. it, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Thanks for asking. All right. Yes. Awesome. I think we had somebody else. Thank you for the poll. Yes, we will, Pastor Green. We will take the question from the chat now. Yes. Go ahead, please. It reads. How do you identify the one that does not receive a gift and what is their purpose? So two things, I think we need to go back to my premise. Maybe the person who asked the question joined later. I did not say that that is a fact. I, I, um, it is important. Uh, all I said, if, I, if somebody were to, if a, if a person were to research the Bible and challenge me, I could not find a text in the Bible where I can definitively say that all persons who receive the Holy Spirit receive a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit itself is a gift to the individual, right? It leads us into all truth. It strengthens us. It makes intercession on our behalves. So these are works of the Holy Spirit that have nothing to do with the work that, that's in the believer's life personally. When you receive the gift of it, that's how you are received into the body of Christ by receiving the Holy Spirit. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps you to live. In, a, in, in, in somewhere in Romans, it says, it makes intercession with groanings, which cannot be uttered. That's right. Jesus said, I will go. It is expedient that I go for when I, for if I do not for go, um, the comforter will not come. And when he, the comforter comes, he shall lead you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. So you see the, the, the Holy Spirit has many different roles that it's playing. So, so, so I think that, again, let's just, I, I, all I'm saying is that there, there, I could not find a scripture. The ones I've read, I, I wouldn't, my interpretation of it is different. To say that everybody that comes into the body of Christ who has received the gift of the Holy Spirit has received a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit itself is gift. Now, if one were to say, let's assume that my premise is true. Let's assume that my premise is true. 
then let's explore the last part of the question. So, um, sorry, Sister Jackie. So it says, what is their purpose? You're a Christian. You're a Christian. And I think personally, if you ask me, um, and I'm not saying gifts are not important, brethren. The gifts are very important. Yes. Gifts are critical. But I believe above all these things, we must understand that being a member of the body of Christ is the gift itself. That's eternal life. Amen. So yes. I'm not saying, I, I want to be clear, manifestations are great. Giftings for preaching and healing and all that is great. But the, 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 the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, That's why right. you need Tremendous. to have it, the same Spirit will quicken the, your mortal body, right? So, so that's the same Spirit that's going to raise men to, um, to eternal life. That is the primary function of the Holy Spirit. It then strengthens. It then teaches. Um, he then um guides, guides yes. and, and all these things so i don't want to be controversial because i don't think that's what the blessing is for um but i will say is i just think it's important that we put that in context and why i say this is because for that same reason of the question asked a lot of people feel like they're useless because they're not manifesting some gifts that is, the, that is the greatest, that is, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I feel a little bit emotional right here. No, there's no such, how could you be, how can the spirit of God dwell in you and you feel like you're useless and you, because you're not manifesting. And I think if you, if you really want me to go a bit deeper, which I'll, with Pastor Corey's look, I'm taking it as go on a little bit further. I will stop if he stops me. But <laughs> I believe that's what Paul was actually trying to prevent I think, I don't think Paul was promoting. I think Paul was trying to prevent because listen to the way he, 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 the language and listen to the way he speaks. Do all prophesy. I think he's trying to make a point. Do all speak with tongues? Do all, you know, work miracles? Are all apostles? No. Because I believe the idea, I don't have any proof for it. I don't. This is just my honest opinion. Yes. I don't have any proof. But I believe that that's what Paul was trying to prevent is the concept of individuals feeling like they have no, they have no purpose because they don't have a gift. And I don't believe that, that what, that's what Paul was, was, um, was promoting. The idea is that the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, you are baptized into the, into the body of Jesus Christ by the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit now gives gifts to certain people in the church according as he wills so that the body can function appropriately. You know, so, so uh, you know, I, I, I hope I didn't lose somebody because, you know, again, brethren, I understand I'm 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 going to really emphasize this. I understand that there are individuals on the line that have a premise from which you you have learned, and and as a learned person, you this is the way you have seen it. So I don't want you to I don't want to confuse you. I'm only saying here's another perspective. Here's another perspective from which to look at the same text, and and I and I. I'm going to muddy the water a little bit and I might close my camera and just run after I say this. Do you know that a lot of the things that are spoken, which mostly are in the book of John, and, and I'm weighing if I should say this best according because I don't want stones to be thrown through the, uh, through the phone. Um, would you believe me if I told you that a lot of the things that the apostles spoke but Jesus Christ spoke to the twelve after the after and before after during and before during and after the Lord's Supper. A lot of those statements. Go back and read the Book of John again. 
especially from chapter 13. A lot of those statements are actually not for every believer. And, and he was actually speaking to the 12. And while a lot of the content can be applied to, in, to us in many, in many forms, he was actually having a conversation with the 12. He was actually having a conversation with the 12. And he was telling them specifically, here are some things that you are going to do. People, now, we quote these texts. And, and again, uh, I know I'm going out on a, a limb here. But we quote these texts and we adopt these texts that they apply to every believer. But if a careful study of the book of, of John, you will see that a lot of the things that, John's, that, that John wrote were where Paul was, was, was Jesus speaking to the 12 and telling them this, you 12 are going to do this stuff. Not everybody. Not everybody. So then, and why is this critical? Like the Holy Spirit and its operation. We get into a tailspin because now we are expecting the church to do certain things and we are not seeing it. And people are asking, well, where is the power of God? Where is the power of God? And people are saying, well, it's because we're not living or it's because we're not um, because we are not united or because whatever the reasons are. But a clearer study of the scriptures, you will note that a lot of the content was to the 12. This is what you 12 are going to do. Anyways, don't take me up on that. That's not here nor there. Pastor Quarry, we are you, we have. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Green. Doing well, doing well. Very interested. I can see, you know, everybody is really listening and learning the word of God. We have to take time with it for us to understand it. Uh, we're going to take Sister Kathleen. We have about 25 minutes leave for the closing of this Bible study tonight. We're going to take Sister Kathleen and see how much you can go into the misuse of the spiritual gifts in the church. Uh, we know we'll have to continue on this for next week. So Sister yes. Kathleen, and then we move from there, Pastor Green. Hi, thank you, Pastor Query. Um, Mr. Green, I have a question for you regarding... Most certainly. I'll start off with the scripture reading. Um, it's Matthew 25, verse 13, and I'll just go to verse... Did you say Matthew 25, 13? Yeah, verse 13 to okay, verse... Okay, thanks. I'll go, to, I'll go to verse 16, but it continues. It's just a longer... Yeah. I'm with and you. It refers to the parable of the 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 talents and yes. um so i'll just read the first three verses um so watch there um watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So, um, um, yes, uh, okay. So I'll, I guess I'll stop at 15, but the, it, the parable continues. Um, and so I wanted, I wanted to know what your interpretation, I guess, of the parable of five talents is in light of what you've just said, because my understanding of this scripture is that um, God has put something in every individual and there's an expectation to cultivate that um, and bear fruit for his kingdom, because the one who did not and hid his talent, um, there were consequences for that. Yes, thank you very much. A great uh... A uh, great, great piece of reading. I love it. That's one of my favorite parables. Um, so I want to go back to uh, Matthew uh, 23, 24. It's important. Again, I love teaching the word of God because I believe it is so important to understand everything in context and to whom uh, certain things are being spoken to. You will a careful look at the text, Kathleen. Um you will notice that um, from when, when we get to chapter 5 and you, 25, go back to every verse and go back all the way to chapter 24. And when you reach chapter 24, um, then go to uh, 
then go to 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 I want to give you the exact text because I think this is critical. So, um, well, let me go back to verse one, 24, one, I'll skip through some of the verses so that we can follow. So Jesus went out this I'm, I'm at, um, Matthew 24, one, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. Notice his what? His disciples came to him to show him. And Jesus began to make statements to them, so on and so forth. And they shall be, and I'm down at verse six, there shall be wars and rumors of war, nations shall rise against nation. Verse eight, these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Again, I'm not saying that this cannot be applied to believers. I am what I am saying. This he was speaking to the twelve. I, I just wanted to add. Um, so, because he likened the kingdom of heaven as this, and the kingdom of heaven is for all believers. And so, do Agreed. you still feel that it's only for them? Despite that, yes, I do. Because the conversation, the conversation. Right. Jesus, again, remember his disciples, he's talking, he came out of the temple and he's talking to the disciples. And he's uh, I want to get down to the gospel and this gospel. I'm at verse 14. Please don't 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 go, Kathleen. I'm going to answer you. And the, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nation. And then shall the end come. And we therefore shall see the abomination. Let the Judah, let him that. From the house stop, neither let him return to the field. I'm looking for the text. I'm so sorry because I was not prepared for that question. Uh, except those days be shortened, they shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. Uh, I am so sorry. Please bear with me. I'm looking for the verse, if somebody can help me, where it says, and his disciples came unto him. What passage is it? I'm at I'm Matthew 24. Okay. And I'm down at 42. Watch therefore, for you know not that the Lord shall come, know you that a good man of the house. Man cometh faithful, behold. Verse 3. Yeah, is verse 3. Is it verse 3? Yes, mm -hmm. perfect. I don't know. I passed it. Um, verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. So we know, right? We, we are in agreement here. The disciples came to him. The word privately means actually nobody's there, just the disciples and him saying, tell us what shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming? All of verse 24 is Jesus talking to the disciples. And when we get to 25, the conversation occurs, continues, sorry. And he continues with parables. You see no transition. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we ought to bear in mind as we do Bible study um, is that when the Bible was originally written, there were no things as verses, nor chapters. So what you really should do, imagine that chapter 24 and verse 51 and chapter 25 and verse one is chapter 24, verse 52 if that makes sense. It's just a continuation of the conversation. They broke it up when they were, um, when we, when they were compiling the Bible, but really, to be honest with you, there is no actual breaking up. So when you get to chapter 25, Jesus is still speaking to his disciples. He tells them the sign of the son of man returning. Um, and then in chapter 25, he says, okay, here's a parable. The kingdom of heaven is lightened unto 10 virgins, which had oiled in their lamp and went forth and so on and so forth. These um, statements, so that, and then we, we see the parable now um, of the talents, which is what you referred to in verse 14. These things the Bible is speaking of, Paul, um, Jesus Christ is explaining how the kingdom of God to the disciples is going to work. 
Jesus is not necessarily saying definitively. And again, remember my premise. I'm not saying that that is not true. I'm just saying I look at the word of God and I, and I put it in the context of which the word is spoken. The same conversation happens to down to verse 25. And the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. Who? What is he describing? The kingdom of what? Heaven. 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 Not the kingdom of earth. Go back to chapter 25, verse 1. So what is he, so what is Jesus doing here? Jesus is actually taking the, is explaining to the disciples, here is what the kingdom of God, of heaven, is going to be. And the manner in which um, uh, uh, hum, uh, the, 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 the examples he's given, rather, is to explain to the apostles, um, our disciples, that these, th this is the manner in which some people are going to, um, uh, it's a similar, it's a simile. It's a simile as to how, when the son of man is coming, what's going to happen. If one were to, I'm sorry, let me go back over to my mic, to my video. If one were to take the position um, that, well, if we read Matthew 25, and we read verse 13, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man traveling, and he gave, and this means that, as a matter of fact, the, the uh, Kathleen, are you there? I am here. Let me ask you a question. When it says five talents, what does that mean to you? It, it means to me that God has given us each something of You're muted, Kathleen. Sorry, I, I said. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I believe it to be. Um, I believe it to be something of value that the Lord puts within each and every one of us, and so I interpret that to be a gift, because it's something that we didn't really have before, that He has bestowed on us. Okay. Okay. So, so the contention obviously is, is because you said each and every one, and I think that's that's where we have a perhaps a, a, uh, a difference, right? We assume, if, if, you, if you start from, and I'm not saying you're wrong, by the way, if you start from that premise that he gave, and these, these are actually speaking about money, by the way, the five talents, is, these are money. Um, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we begin from the premise that it is to everyone, then Yes, you're going to be right, but you but you are, you're beginning from that premise. Well, Jesus here is 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 giving the apostles an example of what the kingdom of God is, of oh, sorry, the kingdom of heaven is similar to. This is a simile, a parable told to bring out a spiritual meaning from a physical experience. If you begin at the premise that to say to everyone is given because the story is told that way, then you're gonna be right. You'll always be right. If you begin to say, I don't really know, what Jesus is using here is an example of three individuals. Just like how in the previous verses, he used 10 individuals. Just like in another verse, he used a woman who had 10 coins and lost one. Just like in another parable, he uses, you know, a hundred uh, sheep and one was lost. If we begin to say, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but if you begin to apply it and say, hey, definitively, this is what it means, then you're going to be right. I can't say you can't do that. I don't see that in the text uh, specifically. Here is an example, in my view, that Jesus is giving them an example or a simile of what the kingdom of heaven is going to, uh, from heaven is going to be. This here is an example. There are three individuals, and these three individuals, one was given a talent, another was given five, another was given two. And the expectation is that these individuals should have worked on what God gave them. Now, I'm not, as I said, my, my, that's my view. I, I, just, I, I just want to add, I think this is my, my last point, and thank you for your answer. But I've assumed that it's for everyone because there are like contextual 
points that point to that for me. For instance, the kingdom of God, uh, again, applies to everyone in my view. Um, it's for all believers. And also the consequence for the servant was that, um, that on in verse 30, it says, and ye, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm in agreement with you. I'm in, I'm in agreement with you. Again, I guess it, it's just, again, it's just perspective. Again, I see this as a parable. And, I, and, I, and the, the message of the parable is that if God gives you something to work on and you don't, this is how, this is your consequence. Now, again, if you apply that to everybody, then I say you are right. I, I just don't see it in the text. <laughs> and I, again, I, I don't want to, you know, but thank you for your input. Um, you could be very possibly right. Pastor Corey, thank you very yes, much. Sure. Um, it seems as if we're not going to hear the touch, the <laughs> touch the everything. original topic that we came for I tonight. Know, but nevertheless, nevertheless, we have nowhere going. The word of God must be teaching season out of season. And so we saw Deacon Meek's hand, and we really want to take his hand because okay. I mean, we need to make sure when, when we leave this platform, we all are edified with the word of God. Deacon Meeks. Yes, I am really thinking about um, everything that is being said. And um, I, I know I have some, some homework to do. <laughs> is it safe to say I have some homework to do, Pastor Corey? <laughs> but um, that, that particular scripture about the talent just just listening to it and and you can help me here if the talent is speaking about about money right my view on this is that whatever resource you have have been given then you should use those um resources just like an, an investment you are expected right. to to build, to build on those, um, you know, investments, and 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 so yes, if 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 it is if it is it, it, this this to me speaks to to stewardship. Correct. You know what I must admit though, if it is a parable and it is saying that the kingdom of heaven is like this, I'm I really I'm really thinking, do we expect some kind of stewardship in in, in 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 the kingdom of heaven you know that's something that i need to to look at or maybe you can you can you can provide some clarity there yeah so all, all it is saying is that if when the kingdom of heaven comes when the kingdom of heaven comes let me tell you a story right when the kingdom of heaven um the deacon meeks when the kingdom of heaven comes here is what's going to happen a man, here is a story. A man was a, um, had a, had three servants. So that's how, that's a context in which the story is told because it's going to lead up to the end. It's, it's driving the whole idea of accountability. So the kingdom, which is to come from heaven, here is how it's going to play out. A man is going to have three, it's a man, it's like a man, sorry, having three servants and saying to one, here is this, and to another, here is this, and to another, here is this, and comes back after a time and says, hey, what do you have? And the person goes, "I, you gave me five, here's five more, you gave me two, here's two more, and the one that had one, right? What, accountability. He hid his in the, in the, in the earth and, and did nothing. Exactly. Again, remember, the subject that we're talking about is not whether or not believers should work in the church of God. We are talking about gifts of the spirit, right? And I and I think we, you know, maybe I, I should have clarified that, right? The, we're talking about gifts of the spirit. We're not talking about whether a person can work in the church of God. And I, I think I was drawing that example before is to say that I don't I don't have to have a gift to work in the church of God. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to understand that the subject matter is that we were talking on the operation of the of the gifts of the spirit 
and then we started to talk about the gifts of the spirit and 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 so now we're, we 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 may have ventured into the actual whether or not a person has use in the church of god similar to what sister Corey was asking before the fact that you that if i am right let's assume i'm right the fact that i I'm, let's say i'm saying i don't necessarily know if that everybody is receives a gift of the holy spirit that doesn't mean even if i'm right that doesn't mean that a believer because they don't have that gift cannot do work for god i think maybe that's the problem maybe maybe that's the, the, the issue because we're associating the gift of the holy spirit and the gifts that come from it with a person being a christian and at the same time living a christian life and 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 don't have to manifest any of these nine or any other gifts and i believe that they're two distinct things from my understanding but again i could be wrong i'm as a teacher my job is to share with you from the scriptures how the scriptures are to be viewed and then you you know each person will have to make a determination what i do believe is a challenge and we're almost at the end here but what i do believe is a challenge and why i'm stressing that we need to i like i like the attitude of the, of the, those who have been on the line who says you know let me go i've heard a different perspective on this let me take it away and go look at it differently and 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 maybe examine it a little bit closer because here's the problem and i've seen it over and over where people where individuals feel like and you will hear people say that all the time i don't know what my gift is and somebody is working over time trying to tell them what their gift is and so these people um you know um end up you know feeling frustrated because they are told that they must have a gift and so they they feel defeated because they see everybody amen hallelujah I think I think I speak by the holy spirit right now they end up being frustrated because they're going around and and they are and and they are feeling defeated because everybody else uh, is mani or not everybody else it's a wrong statement but a lot of people are manifesting and they are not and they are asking well what's wrong with me jemai right what's wrong with me i should be doing something i i don't seem to know what's my gift what's my gift right i think that's the danger in if we are wrong with this i believe that's the danger so um and another argument maybe maybe this might not help either but another argument that i think is is very critical for the church of god to consider as we 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 wrap up um it's important for us to consider as we study scripture and i and i meant i hinted at this earlier the word of god says that um you shall ask anything in my name and it shall be given you how many people have heard that text just raise your hand right everybody everybody has heard that text and i'm going to leave i won't go too deep into this because i know it's going to be controversial too to whom jesus was jesus speaking to whom was jesus speaking when he said that and what does jesus mean when he said that you shall ask anything not some things not some things you shall ask anything in my name and i will give it to you i want you to go back and read that again and you and and i'm not going to give you tell you what my perspective is but go back and read it again you'd be shocked and that's why a lot of people are disappointed because people somebody might say okay well the scripture says this and the scripture does say it but to whom was the apostle to whom was christ speaking to whom was christ speaking and 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 if that is true if that is true for you and me and everybody else then is the word of god lying no i i don't think the word of god is lying i think the word of god is true but i think we have to understand in the context of which the word is spoken what and whom and under what circumstance is it speaking 
so anyways, I don't know if that helped, but I, I just, I just thought, you know, I just have, I have a lot of information. I don't know if it's good to say everything I, I kind of have studied because I understand that, you know, as human beings, myself included, I was born in Jamaica and I came to Canada in 19, 1989, about 31 years ago it would be. Yeah. And when I came here, one of the first things, I was a young preacher. Just bear with me, Pastor Corey, I'll hand back to you in two seconds. You know, um, I was preaching and my understanding of the word, according to certain training that I had received, um, I, I delivered the word according to my training. When I went to Bible school, um, it was very difficult for me. It was very difficult because the professors will ask me questions and I and I, I had a certain viewpoint on it. That's how I was taught. And I would share my view on it and they would ask me certain questions. And then I recognized that I couldn't answer those questions. I really couldn't. And I, it was there I really began to understand that it is, it is not easy. It is not easy to have a different position on something you have spent your entire life believing. And I'm not saying to accept the things I've said to you tonight. What I am saying though, is that go, um, even Paul, the great teacher, um, noted the brethren from Thessalonica, or as we know, Thessaloniki, and said to them, concerning them, these people were noble because they went home and they and they reviewed the things that I preached unto them. And they came back the next week and Paul reasoned out of the scriptures. So please do not be offended by my views. Um, these are just as the spirit of God, I believe has led me and I can only teach you what I think to be true based on my, my knowledge and the Holy Spirit. I am also, I must say also that I am a human being. I am fallible. I am fallible, which means that I could teach you something that I can later on come back and say, I've studied further and well, this seems to be different. So in no way of shape or form, Pastor Corey and brethren, am I saying that, you know, the, 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 the things I've taught you that you must adhere to them. What I am saying to you is take it home, review it, read the scriptures again, um, and and then 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 come back and and maybe we can have another conversation. Um, thank you, Pastor Green. Thank you, sir. And um, just before you go, sir, there are three hands. I'm not quite sure if Brother Devon wanted to say something. I saw his mic open, but. Brother Evangelist Danny Walker and Deacon Meeks put up his hand again. And um, Sister Jackie want to ask you, you know, a few points as well. And we're going to take it in that order. And we okay. probably have to close tonight chapter. And let me say this to you, um, brethren, on this platform, that Pastor Green will be with us for the entire month of January. So no rush. Um, very interesting topic, and it's not it's not a topic that you can just walk over so easily because there are so many scriptures and there are so many views on the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. So um, we will try our best as a church um, to answer your question in Bible study. So if Brother Devon wants to speak, you may go ahead. If not, Evangelist Danny Walker, Deacon Meeks, and then Sister Jackie, and we wrap up there. Thank you very much. No, so we take evangelist Danny Walker, please. Yes, um, as usual, quite interesting um, Bible study. Um, I agree with um, Sir Howard Green um, with what you have said and what you have taught. I remember too, when I went to college and I was bringing, telling people about 
my my belief and stuff. And then when I was bombarded with a lot of questions that I myself could not answer, and uh, that awakened my curiosity about several teachings. And so as we evolve um, and we allow the spirit to minister to us, um, we will eventually get there. And I like the humility in which she spoke and, uh, uh, and so forth. I, and, and other things that I like, I cross. Now here in New Evangel. Yeah, something something may have happened to the internet. Yeah. Right not hearing me? We're hearing you now, yes. Yeah, yeah you came back. Yeah. Okay. I was saying that, you know, we have to be careful when we teach. And I like the humility in which he's teaching and he's saying that boy, if later on he discovered that he have taught something that he he's got a greater insight on, he would come and let us know. The, the scripture that you mentioned that we need to go and research is, is an important scripture. And not only said that um, because of who you were speaking to, not only because of who he was speaking to, but because what he was particular referring to, right? What the Amen. scripture was particular referring to. So if you read that scripture carefully, then you'll find out, you will get the answer to that question. And it's not as controversial as you may think it is. Um, I dare say, though, that I believe that all of us has a gift uh, or should have a gift. Let me say that. All of us should have a gift. And I take my reference from the, the fact that the Bible says maybe, I don't know if this is a good reference, but I have others that we, we, are, we are, are a body. And it said that each one, each name of the body has a function. So all of us, I believe, have a role to play uh, in the, the building of the body. And so we had to pray and, and, um, and find out what it is that God has um, asked us to, to, to do, what it is that God has gifted us. And, and, and a, a lot of persons do not understand. And probably you can, we can do a study on that eventually. I have done it in the past where we look at how can you identify your gift. Right, and a lot of persons we ask, uh, my my me, uh, um, sometimes, how do I know my gifts? And this as a question a lot of person has been asking. But there are some indicators that you can use to identify whether it's your gift uh, or not. And one of them is anything that you are passionate about, anything that um you you know uh, and so forth. That's just one example of of identifying gifts. But we have to identify our gifts. We, we have to know what it is that God has placed um, in our hands for us to use it. What that God has given, made us steward up so that we can use it to benefit the church. If it's not benefiting the church, then it's not a spiritual gift. And so we pray as a church that we begin to unhurt these gifts so that the church can be benefit from it and that the church can grow as God wants it to grow and that God may get the glory. Again, I say thanks again, Pastor Quarry and your church here in Ottawa for um, this program. Thanks, Sir Green, for the way in which you presented your program and you have made references, biblical references. You have given us a lot of things to think about and let us not, um, because of all we were taught, to, to immediately go against what has been said. Let us go and look again, you know. That is all Sir Green said. He continues to look. Let us go and look and, and open our minds, hoping that um, we, will, we, will, we will get a greater understanding of what it is that God has, has been saying to us. So thanks again for the program, and may God bless you. Thank you, Brother Danny. Pastor Quarry, before you go forward, with your permission. Yes, sir. Go ahead. There's um, Yvonne, please, um, Yvonne, unmute your mic. And um, if you're still there, I don't know if you left because I know we passed our time. But I saw something in the chat and I thought this is very interesting. And I wanted to give you a, a perspective. Yvonne, are you there? Yes, I am. Good night, Great. everyone. Good night, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Pastor Green. Good, fantastic. Thank you for bringing this forward. With Pastor Quarry's permission, uh, you, uh, for those who are not 
perhaps don't see this. I'm in the chat. It says, every does not exclude anyone. So the word, she's saying the word, every does not exclude anyone, according to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. All right? I want you to read for me uh, 1 Timothy 6, 10. Could you do that? I'm sure. Thank you. And thank you for your participation. I hate to call you out. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wanted. I just thought it was nice to, to, to I love the reason, you know. First so, Timothy, what? To First Timothy six, verse ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Great. Thank you very much. So, I would like to concentrate on the first sentence. For the love of money is the root of all, because the word here is every, and making a reference. Is that true? For the love of money is the root of all right. evil. Yes. What are you yeah. saying about that? Is it true? For well, the love what of money. Saying. I know. I know. That's my point. And it yeah. says that for the love of money is the root of all evil. I'm, I'm using the word all mm -hmm. as you use the word every. Correct. Because your point is every in 1 Corinthians 12 says every. Therefore, if, if it's every, cannot in exclude anyone. So then my point is, if the love of money is the root, if the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil, if it's true, then we've got a problem. Because if I commit fornication, is that an evil? If I it's commit fornication, it's a sin. Oh, so it's 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 not evil. It's it's just a sin. Well, if you want to deem it as evil, it's just not. You know, that's the word you want to use. That's fine. Yeah, I, I, I'm making a point. So the word all. Mm -hmm. um, if if for the love of money is the root of every evil, all means every all. If I commit fornication, it's an evil work but it has nothing to do with money. So how do you, how does one, not you, sorry, I apologize. How does one satisfy that argument? Well, this, this argument is speaking, that statement is speaking to one who loves money, that is the root of all evil. The love of it is the root of all evil. So if I say- so money here. Right. So, so again, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to rationalize. Mm -hmm. Person who loves money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. If all evil comes from the love of money, because that's the premise of the conversation, then every evil must be linked to money. No, that's not what it states. I would not interpret it that way. That's not how I'm. Yeah. So, so I'm. I'm. Tr I'm. So I'm your listener. I'm your listener. I'm your student. So teach right. me what it means. And and when you spoke about fornication, fornication is a transgression of the law. So it's not evil. It's a transgression of the law, and that's a separate conversation from the love of money being the root of all evil. What I would like us to focus on, though, is um First Corinthians, when no, you. But, speak but, because I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, you want to say in context yeah. about the, the Holy Spirit and how it operates and what, the, what are the gifts that have been given? Because um, God has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given the Holy Spirit as a gift to all believers. I'm not disputing the, that. I'm not disputing that. I'm, right, I'm, 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 I, just, I just... To all believers. So it's okay. every believer that has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, which has been given to us, has given gifts to every believer, some one, some two, several gifts. And so we all operate under the, um, through the Spirit, the operation of the Spirit. Now the manifestation of the Spirit, as Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, when he says, but the manifestation is given to profit everyone with all, is that at a given moment, the Holy Spirit will empower individual and an individual or individuals on certain occasions. And when that happens, everyone who is present should 
be edified by the, op the, the manifestation that takes place. And, and I agree with your last statement. So that's that. that I, I was only. I'm not saying you're wrong, by the way. I'm just. I'm just giving you. Um, I, I think I've already shared my opinion, but I'm saying that if if one because you put every in quotations, mm -hmm. I'm, I drew First Timothy six ten to show to to prove because the everyone there so that everyone would profit. I agree with. It's a given so that everyone would profit, and everyone who has it must. Mm -hmm ensure that when they operate i'm just saying for me i'm, I'm I, I drew first corinthians sorry timothy 6 10 to show that when when we're talking about the the the, the subject we're talking about the the subject of the, the gift of the holy spirit the everyone is not everybody the everyone that's my position anyways the everyone is everyone must benefit Everyone who has it must make sure they operate that everyone benefits. That's all my point I was making. So when I drew First Timothy 6.10, I was saying that if you read the text, because we have, remember we're using English language, right? In English language, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna be absolute with First Corinthians 12, 11, then we have to be absolute with First Timothy 6.10. You can't apply an interpretation. But if you say I can apply, an interpretation to First Timothy six ten, then means I can apply an interpretation to verse to to First Corinthians twelve eleven. So here we know this: the love of money is not the root of every evil work. The the love of money is not the root of every evil work. So there has to be a proper interpretation of the text, right? Because it says all, and I'm I'm saying that um, again, every there is not speaking to everyone. All I'm saying is that my understanding that every there is speaking um, of every person who receives it and every person who is present to be blessed by it. I'm not saying it's not, uh, individuals should not give their opinion on it, but I, I just wanted to drive that home, right? I hope you're okay. I hope I didn't, um, <laughs> not at, not at all. I'm quite, all right, I'm quite good. fine. I'm quite fine. Good, good, good. But okay, um, okay. the verse you picked out, we would have to um, speaking to the love of money. We would have to read that in context. And since we, I was not focusing on that, you bringing that to me now. Then I would have to review that because then if you go to that, you verse nine, the verse before speaks that. But they, as a matter of fact, would have to go back way back in the the chapter to read it in context. So this is not Agreed. something that I would apply to the text that we're presenting right now about the Holy Spirit, because mm -hmm. it's, it's a totally different context that is speaking. I, so I agree. I, I was only, we, uh, we would have to look at that as a separate thing. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think Joseph uh, wrote, and, and this is actually the actual interpretation, uh, just for everybody's knowledge, and I don't, we don't want to lose anybody and make it a two-person conversation. I would take this way, and this is Joseph uh, um, that wrote this in First Timothy 6, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But if you read it in the in the King James Version, and if you read it as it is, similar to 1 Corinthians 12, is my point. That's all the point I'm making, is that, yes, you when you read a text, if you just take that word and you apply it, and you don't think context, then it can also create, um, you know, a certain view. So, but thank you very much. I apologize if I, uh, <laughs> if I called you out there. Uh, oh, no, it was not fine. to make you uh, feel bad. It's just a oh, no, uh, I don't. insight conversation. All right, mm. thank you. All You're right. a really thank humble you. person. I appreciate that. Sure. Thank you very much. Hello? Can I get Brother Devon's question? Well, since he didn't have one. I'm not quite sure if he did. His mic was just open and closed. So um, I don't think he have one. I'm not quite sure. Um, he didn't put one in the chat and he didn't raise his hand. I just see his mic open. So okay. this is why. So I'm not quite sure. Um, but let me apologize because um, we, we tried to manage our time properly and we're supposed to dismiss by 9.30. Yes. It's almost 10 minutes now to, to 10. And so... Yes. Um, we're going to conclude right here. Um, very good, very good discussion. 
humble, timely, and, and, and very informative. I, I love it, and I like the view. And thank you, Sister Sister Heaven. Um, um, I'm not quite sure which, which country are you in, Sister Heaven. I would love to know. You don't have to show you your face. Brother Quar, this is Yvonne Coburn. I'm in New York. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, thank you again. And um, as you look on the screen there, you, you, you saw or you see my beautiful wife. She will um, go with the vote of thanks as, as, as we close this chapter. Thank you again. And I said before, and I say it again, Pastor Green will be here for the entire month of January, right? So um, we will take up the misuse of the gift next week. Um, do you see so many questions We're go straight into from it. last week? So we we have to make sure we get your 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 views and, and okay. answer your question. And really and truly, I give God okay. thanks for Pastor Green and the Hebrew way, which he really, you know, take the, the discussion tonight. As we look at the word of God, brethren, um, the word of God is there, it's bigger than us, but through the Holy Spirit that grant us the wisdom and knowledge and the understanding, we can have the true interpretation of God's word. Or as we look at the Holy Spirit, then we know that the Spirit itself also will give us Hallelujah. the full Amen. understanding of God's word so that we will be edified. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, my wife, as I said, will do that hearty welcome at the end. And so at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Carl, Amen. Brother Kalmarta here from the Arawa Church to close us in prayer, after which our favorite man with that benediction, Brother Paul Francis, will do it, and then Sister Quarry will come in and give you that vote of thanks. Brother Marta, thank you. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father in heaven, Lord, we need thankful to you, Lord, for your love, thank for your mercy. Dear God, we want to thank you, Father, for the man servant, Lord, that you have used, Father, this afternoon, Lord. I want to thank you, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to be with him, continue to guide him, dear Father. I pray, Lord, that you continue, dear Father, the Holy Spirit upon him, dear Father. As you said, Lord, that you will send the Holy Spirit that will teach us all things that need Amen. to be. No, dear God, I pray for him, dear Lord, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to guide him, dear Father, that he will speak, dear Father, the word that he speak may not be of his own opinion, oh God, but it will be directly from you, God. Amen. But I want to thank you, and I pray that for all those who have made it possible, who have taken the time, Lord, to yes. be with us today, Lord, I pray a blessing upon them. Amen. I pray their strength, dear Lord, and I pray, Lord, that they your joy may be in them, dear God, that they may continue, dear Father. Seek thee, dear Lord, your word, dear Father, is, dear Father, will guide us through, dear Father. We need, Lord, to know more about you, dear God. We need to hear your word. We need to understand your word, dear Father, as we guide, dear Father. You have given us, dear Father, this opportunity, dear Father, to share and to, to congregate, dear Father, which... Amen. Father, dear Father, around dear Father, we want to thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. We give thank you thanks, you, we give you praise, we give you honor, dear God. And I pray, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to, to speak to your people, dear God, we pray, as we God. search your word, dear God, oh. and as you teach us, dear Father. Help us, Father. Be with us continually, dear Father. Take charge and take control. As I say thanks, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, sir, Brother Paul. benediction now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect, perfect. Make you good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom in glory forever and ever Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Paul. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. We still have 53 persons online. Thank you very much. My beautiful wife will come forward and she will give that vote of thanks to all of you that are here with us tonight and our guest speaker, Pastor Amen. Green.
Now, I'm not stealing your comments, Deacon Meeks, but he, I've been on his platform a few times and he keeps on saying, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and tonight, it's basically that wow, wow, wow feeling that I'm having pretty much. It's and okay, Lisa. I'm borrowing from him his comments. We want to say thanks. It has really been a riveting session. I've written so many things on my book that I need to go review. Um, I have so many questions. I've written so many questions and I pretty much think maybe other persons would have had some questions as well, but hopefully I can find my answers by myself. But we are so grateful to be studying the word on this level. It's, it's like taking it to another level, taking it up a notch. Don't you say in this situation, thank you, COVID? <laughs> Thank you, COVID. Indeed, to Pastor Huslin, Pastor Marshall, Pastor Wallace, and if there are any other pastors online, we want to say thank you so much. Evangelist Samuel, Evangelist Danny Walker, um, thank you so much. And if there are any other evangelists that we may have missed, um, thank you ever so much for coming. Deacon Meeks, Deacon Omar Hamilton, I see you there. Thank you so much, Brother Joel McDonald. I see you there. And we mm -hmm. want to say thank you, Missionary Martin, and all the missionaries that are there um, um, online with us. We are grateful if you're tuning in from the United States or from England or from Jamaica or from Canada um, to our own brethren here in Ottawa. We want to say thank you. And Pastor Green, we are eternally grateful for the level of wisdom Amen. and the level of knowledge that you bring to the fore. You have taken our minds out of the regular, well, from my, my mind, out of the regular. And you have forced me now to go do some research for myself, which I think if we leave here with nothing, everybody who is leaving here fuzzy would say, I'm leaving here with an intention to go dig into the word, to go pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us. And I think that is what is most fitting even now, that we are drawn to an era where we are studying the word and opening our minds. And Evangelist Walker said it so, so nicely that we sort of clean our minds of what we were originally taught somewhat and say, and Pastor Green, you said the word, where did I get this from? Where did it come from? Where in the Bible is it? And I've written down those questions that I'm going to pretty much be asking myself as I spin the leaves. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We are eternally grateful for um, your prog prerogative thoughts that you have brought to this session. Um, Deacon Lambert Davis, thank you as well, sir. I see you're being drawn into my statement so much that you can't even take a deep breath. I'm looking at you. <laughs> and thank you, brethren. Like thank you, brethren. Thank you, Pastor really Corey, um, yeah. for um, being at the end of this. And we are so grateful. Have yourselves a lovely night. And as we study the words, study to say, show yourself approve. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing. And we're going to pray it so that the Holy Spirit reveals to us and we rightly divide his word. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Quarry. Thank you. God amen, bless amen. you. God bless amen. you. Amen. And thank you amen. as well for doing the vote of thanks so wonderful for us. Um, I want you to bear in mind, as I said, brethren, Pastor Howard Green will be back next week, and we're going to use this same flyer for next week because we haven't touched it yet. The misuse of the gift of the Spirit of God in the church. A very, a very interested one, and I, I know many came on tonight just for it. And, and so don't be disappointed. It is coming. We will look at it. We will talk about it. And let me tell you something. I have a presenter and a teacher already for the month of February Oh my God, if you would want to know who that is, but I will not tell you until we reach that month. God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you as we continue to study. And I'm going to give Pastor Wallace and Evangelist Danny Walker the privilege right now to make their announcement. God bless you. God bless you, um, Pastor Corey. Thank you so much. Bless God. So by way of announcement, Tomorrow night, by the grace of God, at 7.30, we continue our weekly prayer meeting.
we are inviting one and all to come and be a part of this wonderful platform that we are receiving so much blessing and persons who are being healed and testimony of God's deliverance. We don't claim to have all the answer, but we know who has. And so we'll be um, inviting all to come at 7.30 tomorrow as we, as we seek to engage each other. And we're going to be asking brethren to come with a word, come with a testimony, come with a word of encouragement. And so we want to, uh, uh, again, extend invitation to one and all to be a part of it. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Corey. Bless you, sir. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Wallace, again, for being here with us. Evangelist Danny Walker, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. What a night. What a night. Um, sir Meeks would say, whoa, what a night. What a night. Enjoy every moment of it. Heads up to the old, um, a, 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 a tire. Oh, what's the church name again? Oh, What's the uh, name no. of the ABC? Uh, Canada. <laughs> Ottawa, 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 <laughs> Ottawa Church. <laughs> um, just to add to Pastor Wallace's thing tomorrow night, um, I don't know, it can, we're going to think probably, come with your prayer request to God in the, the future for next year. What is it that you want God to do for you for next year? You know, you, you may not be able to share it with us, but come with it in your minds. And so that we can pray for you tomorrow night that God may really turn things around in your life for 2021, all right? So, you know, a new season is upon us. And so we want to also pray about that tomorrow night, all right? So please come in your numbers. Let us, let us bring down heaven um, tomorrow Amen. night you know, Amen. Um, in the prayer meeting, all right? Amen. Um, Saturday night, brethren, Saturday night is going to be our fun night. We have some very special persons who will be on. Pastor Quarry is one of them. We have um, Missionary Smith. Now, um, Pastor Smith, I should say. And Missionary Smith. Um, Pastor Smith is, he, he, you know, Pastor Smith is always a jovial person. So we're going to have him on too to, to, to entertain us. And Michael Campbell, myself, many others trying to get um, Sir Brown from, that is, from Canada too, that is Olive Brown brother on. I try and go and try and contact him tomorrow. But we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have our bulla contest, bulla eating contest. <laughs> um, we're gonna have our so go and buy a bulla. You know, there was, I don't know if you can go to shop, <laughs> but if it, there's maybe a bulla <laughs> shop you buy. And, and go and buy a bulla, bulla eating contest, crackers <laughs> eating contest. <laughs> there are kind. There are gonna be many surprises, Bridget. Many, many surprises. We're gonna hear from Miss Lou and Rani. I don't know who that is gonna be yet. But it's going to be a lot of surprises. All right, people, it's going to be impromptu. People are going to be called up to do things. And we're going to have a fun, real, real fun, laughter and all of that. So come and let us relax at the end of the year. Let us laugh away COVID and, and so forth. Let us give. And, and those of you who don't want to laugh aloud, you can give the Sarah laugh. Laugh within yourself like Sarah did. All right, so. God bless you. Looking forward to see you Saturday night at 6 o'clock. We may have Robert Crawford too. 